the system for teaching classes on Scratch that I told you it is uh, hosted by um, Harvard University and it is featured by them so we can actually get featured there in their newsletters. And uh, there are some procedures. The, the first procedure was to join the class. You already saw it. Um, it displays the class studios and you can scroll to see all the stu teaching studios that I created. So these are the studios I created in the ST system. Each of them contains a number of classes. And under it, this is a student's list, which automatically is um, added here as soon as you join the class. Now, we go back to the class studios. We click on view all. And now we can better see all the studios. Can you see my screen now? Yes. Okay. Yes. So these are the studios that we'll be teaching in this class. Now I know a couple of you are already more advanced, so please um, try not to get bored during the first presentation. Um, you might still enjoy it because what we do with these classes, to go in more details into doing things in different ways, in various ways, and discover more tricks that Scratch offers. Because what we normally do when we start on Scratch, we all did the same. We explored and we experimented and we tried this and that. But when you actually get to learn how much Scratch can do for you in every single chapter, you know, we start from the bottom with lesson studio one all the way to studio 14. It is amazing how empowered you become when you know how to do all these tricks. Now, the first studio, studio you see here is a student's project. This is where um, your work will be added. And I uh, check mark here to allow um, everyone to add projects. So I can add your work if I go here, if I add projects and I click on, click on my students' projects, I will see your projects at the bottom here. Uh, you will work on your own pages individually and then I can add them here. So then everybody can see them when you're ready for that. So this will be the project. Um, or if you choose to add them yourself, then you'll be able to add them to the page. In comments here next to projects, I would like as soon as you have an account to let us know. So I said here or hi and say your real name so I know who you are um, connected to your nickname. So like for the Dancing Dragon, it will help me if I know the name. You don't need to put your full name. I think if we just put the first name will be, will be enough. So do you see where I am now? Let's, let's start there again. We are in the studios page, class studios, and the first studio is students' projects. This is a list of projects. Next to projects, you'll see comments. And you just need to put a comment here and say here and say your name. So then we can have your list of uh, students. We, we have your names and your nicknames. Then curators, you will find all your, all your accounts here. Uh, curators are the people, the accounts who can participate in the class and you are automatically added as soon as you join the class, you're added to this studio and to all the other studios. Now, going back to projects, to the project page. Let's finish with this one. Simplify a bit. So I went back to the studio classes. Anybody has any questions so far? No questions? Okay. Um, I didn't get to introduce George, my son here. He'll be helping me in, uh, in teaching some of the studios. So he's quite experienced in, uh, um, in Scratch, but mainly in gaming. So he's all about gaming. Um, my approach is to teach from the very beginning with Studio One, with Ways to Move. I created the studios following a curriculum recommended by Harvard University with all the main chapters that are required in the study. When we get to the end, you will see in Games and Beyond, in the studio, all the games that I listed here are created by my son. And I chose them because they are representative for the different categories of games that you'll be able to create. So these are, he's 12 years old, so these games are created by 12 years old in the past two years, I would say. Like games in which you chase something or games in which you jump over obstacles, amazing games. Password games, when you guess things or you try different, uh, different words that provide different results. Uh, games in which you pick up, grab things from the screen and you grow points. 
clicker games, and then we have uh, even a live log simulator. I will invite him at the end to present a little bit to go through all his games, just to show them how they work, because we will learn how to do every, every one of them. Um, now I'm just going to say the name of the studio to start with, and I'll show you an example of lesson that I created in, in all these studios. The first one will be ways to move. Uh, this will be the easiest one, but since there are beginners, it's very important to go through it because it shows us many, many ways in which we can move in Scratch and what the tricks are to get there. Um, this will be the, the first studio. Now, the second studio is about turning, spinning, following direction. I'll give you just an example. I'll open one to show you the, uh, some examples. Once I open this lesson, lesson seven. On the right, you will see the instructions I give. So before going in the coding page, I'll just um, let you explore what I try to demonstrate in this class. Every class, every lesson demonstrates more ways of doing uh, spinning around here, for example. So first we click the flag. And what do we say? Click the first sketch to make it spin, following the mouse pointer, the moving cursor. So once I click on it, it activates and I can spin it around using my mouse and I say forever. It means that if I keep going like this, we can go on forever. While if I say do it a number of times, it will, for example, do it three times and then stop. We'll, uh, we'll learn about it in the first studio. Now, what's the next one? Click the second cat to make it fly in diagonal. So these are so many different ways to fly. I, I chose in diagonal across the screen and also bounce back when we get to the edges. So this is the second. We keep flying in diagonal, that's a tricky way to do it, and bounce back. That means if we get to the edge of the screen, it will come back. If I don't put the condition to bounce back from the edge, it will go and we lose the sprite because it, it will keep going, keep going forever. Now, the next one, click the third kit to make it fly left and right across the screen. I'm going to stop this one so it doesn't bother us. I click on the third one. So this goes back and forth or course horizontal at the position where it was. Because now if I move it, if I go in the code and I move it, it will fly horizontally, but at a different level. I added another one here click the space key to make it fly up and down. So if I click the space fee, um, key instead, it will take the same sprite and it will go up and down. Now I'm going to stop it. And now I try again to make it go horizontal. See? So these are different ways to spin around. Another one I would like to show you just as a demonstration is this one, which becomes very funny because these sprites have costumes, you know what the costumes are, and because of that we can make them fly or change colors. Click each sprite to make it fly and each of them will also flap wings. They have costumes, so this one I made it fly vertically up and down and also flap the wings. The same thing will happen with the dove. We'll fly up and down and flap the wings. Now, the balloon doesn't have wings. What I could find about it was to make it change colors. So while we fly around, we can also make it change colors. We can also add sounds, like each of them would have a different particular sound when flying and flapping wings, right? I thought this was interesting. So these are just a two, two examples from the lessons that we'll do in uh, turning, spinning, following. I'll actually show you another one because this implies mathematics a little bit and it will be very interesting because it is easy once we do it, once we learn how to do it. Click the space key and it will draw a square. So as it spins around, this time that it doesn't spin in place. I made it spin in a way that it actually creates a square. And then if I click the cat, I'll make it draw a hexagon. How do I do it? Is by making it turn in the first case uh, to 95 degrees and the other one is 60 degrees. 45 degrees, sorry. 45 degrees and then 60 degrees. 
we learned this in the spinning class, but we'll also come back to it uh, in the studio that teaches a little bit of uh, math. Um, another one, let me show you this one too. This one spins in different ways without using a pencil, without drawing. So it makes a square, but without actually drawing the square. For the one where we had the drawing there, that means that I had to use a function called pen. When we put the pen down and it practically draws anything the sprite does on the screen, it will appear drawn. So this practically creates the same square, but you cannot see the square because we didn't put the pen down. Anybody has any questions so far? No? Okay. Is it interesting? All right, then let's go to the next one because we don't have much time. <clears throat> I wanted to show you a couple of examples from the studio called Sounds. We all learned how to put some music in background and there will be some funny ways to uh, play this music. Now, this combines animation and sound. I'm just showing you because it's fun. This is actually very easy to do. It didn't take any degree of difficulty. But this is the way in which we can create movement and sound and a nice backdrop. In another case, we make people talk. So these guys are going to give a speech and first they start speaking all together. And you can even hear my face in the background because uh, my kid is recording me, I didn't know. So she put the iPhone and she recorded while I was recording Now, if I stop it here and I click each speaker at a time, it will start doing its own thing. While if I click the green flag again, <laughs> it will make them again speak at the same time. So why is that? Because we are using an event that triggers something to happen. Like I want to show you briefly inside here in the code. So when we click the flag, something happens. While when we click the sprite, something else happens. In other cases, we had click the space bar and then something else will happen. So here you see what happens for the first sprite, once I go to the second sprite, I go to the third sprite, and then we also have a backdrop. So this is when things become a bit more complex. But again, this is uh, not a difficult sounds example. A more interesting one that I want to show you, and you're going to have a lot of fun, I promise you, making this thing. This, this is a very, very interesting example. Again, we have two options, to click the flag or to click um, the space key. If we click the flag, we're going to click a play a melody or turn off my sound that I chose. So I chose those sounds and I mix them together. It will just play the melody. Now, if instead, as you see the instructions here, there are instructions in every lesson. Click the space key first instead of clicking the flag turn off and we click the space. This enables us to actually use the keyboard to play the same sounds in our own way. So I say click the keys, four, five, six, seven, eight, and they will, click, they will play the same sound. I'm going on my keyboard. Here. So they're the same sound that originally played the melody, but you can play your keyboard like you play the piano. Just follow those keys. You can do it yourself. So if you want to, want to experiment a little bit, go on your keyboard and click on the keys. First of all, you need to click the space bar. Click the space bar so it enables the keys. And then go click on four, five, six, seven, eight and play the sound. Does it work? Okay. This is interesting because you can practically play the way you want to experiment on the piano. 
another thing I did, the, the drumming one, this is also interesting. And you can always put, so put a nice backdrop to look, to make it look dramatic. So you're on a stage. So in this one, you click the, click the green flag to start. And then we click, I chose the arrow keys this time. I chose four drumming sounds that I uh, linked to the arrows. So let me show you inside here because this is more simple. All you need to see here is that uh, when a particular key is pressed, like left arrow, it will play a particular drum sound for 0.25 bits, and then it goes to the next one. But you have the control over it. So if you go on the keyboard now, why don't you do the same? First of all, you play the, you click the green flag to start. And then go to the keys with the arrow. Arrow up, down, left and right. And play with that a little bit. And you play the drum. And if it works. Does it work? Did, did anybody play the drum? I did. You did, okay. I can hear you you're, if you're unmuted. So I, I could only see one of you who made a sign to me like this. If, you, if, you're, if you're muted, just show me a sign so I know that you're all right. So for now we finished with the sounds. Oh, of course, I had another one with the barking dog and the uh, meowing cat, but we'll, we'll get into that later. Now, from this math and variables um, studio, uh, I'll show you two examples, which are very, very interesting. This one I created with my son, so George had a big contribution to this one. So we we'll always read the instructions, click the green flag and watch it happen. We, we rock it all, um, we launch the rocket. So this is practically a countdown. Yeah, it counts down and then it allows the rocket to blast off. And then there is a trick, he came up with this. There is also a secret key that will uh, allow you to glitch it out. You click the uh, P key to spot the ghost rocket. So I'm going to do this. So if you click, First of all, you have to click the green flag to start with. And after we blast off, after that, you can go to the uh, key P and you can see the ghost rocket and you can see that it, it has uh, costumes as well. So one of them is standing and one of them is blasting off. Does it work? Yeah. Okay. And just one more I want you to show you here. This one is very funny, I think. So let's look at the instructions first. Click the green flag to make the cat figure out the fruit's mass using variables. So I use variables to make this, uh, it's a little sort of game. It's counting. So once I click the green flag, it starts calculating how many fruits I have, eight apples, six, five oranges, and I do the math. And then click the brown monkey to start the guessing game. Trying to guess, it's getting it all wrong, I'm not smart enough. And then Click the gray monkey to make it complicate the fruit's math and figuring, figuring out. So this shows what we display and how we play around is displaying these things. But if you see inside, it's actually using mathematical functions to do the math for you. So you can see this here how it does a, 
addition. And if you go to the brown monkey, the one, the gray monkey, you can see that it gets a little bit more complicated. And uh, you can see the difference when it says sing, it's what it displays. So it just displays it. While when we say, uh, when we use a mathematical function, it will actually calculate it. Um, before we start teaching the first studio, we'll go through all the different types of blocks and I'll explain you a little bit about each different category of blocks. It's really nice as they colored them for us because we can easily recognize them. This is, you know, in the operators, you see the green ones here. This is where you find the uh, math operators. But we'll talk about it before we start um, teaching. This is about math. I'm going to uh, skip loops, input, events, and if then, if then, else, because this will be particular type of blocks that we'll study. Um, now I'm going to go in animation. Now we, we all like animation, but when we talk about animation in Scratch, it can be of many types. Um, so here's more like a generic studio with simple animation. You already saw some of them, like this is a riding horse, you a blasting off, different type of animation here. Um, I'll show you a couple of funny things that my son did. So he likes to do things like this for Einstein. Look what he did for Einstein. George, are you here? Can you unmute yourself a little bit so you don't say I'm uh, gossiping you? So he came up with this. So he already, of course, he had to Photoshop the pictures to, to do that. I, I just want you to know that I can't hear any man, anybody, you're muted. So if you say anything, I can't hear anything. You have to message or unmute yourself, okay? This is another thing that comes from Einstein that he liked. He has a, he, he, he has a fascination for this formula, MC2. Actually, this is supposed to be a superscript there. So he created a sort of black hole here. I thought this was interesting to share. This is his personal account. So what I did here, these uh, uh, lessons are created, that they are no lessons, they are his games. They are created in his personal account, but I could uh, include them here with a link as a curator. And this one he created actually together with a partner in the camp, in the last year's camp, I think, or the spring camp. This is the ICI that I can move around. As I showed you before, you can make control it with moving the cursor around. And uh, in this case, these sprites were created by him and his friend Lily. So they actually designed the sprites as well. So this is more like a generic type of animation. It also leads me to Studio 9 in which uh, you create your own sprite and probably George is going to do this because it's, uh, it, it's his particular, this is a jump game that I like, I'll show it to you, which he made entirely drawing his, okay, rest space. So it was quite interesting. Another one, he likes parks and gerbils. So many of his games are all about parks and gerbils. So this is just a racing thing. So you can practically design anything there and save it as a sprite and make costumes and everything and then include it in a game. When, when we get here, I will, uh, I will let George uh, talk more about it. Um, now, a particular type of animation that you might like. Anybody, any questions so far? Please unmute and tell me if you have any question or any comment. I cannot hear you, you're muted. Okay, give us a thumbs up if you can follow till now. If, you, if you're able to understand, yes, Kevin. 
is giving me a thumbs up. Yes. Okay, perfect. Nina, can I have a thumbs up if you can understand so far? With each, everything bit by bit, it will all become easy. So everything that is here is here to be learned. Okay, I wanted to show you this type of animation that I made and uh, it's still work in progress because I could also add sounds, for example. It's called storytelling animation. It's a type of animation in which you practically make stories. So all I have to do now is to click the, click the green flag and let it follow. So let me try to make it um, a bit bigger and just follow the story. Okay, so you can, you can create any kind of story you want and this will be more complex. We, we use in this lesson, we use the broadcasting messages to message around and we connect these messages to everything that happens. Of course, another thing to add would be sounds and we can also use like recorded uh, um, actor voices. So you can also pretend to be an actor and record your voice. So while the messages appear, you can also narrate it through. So this is a very, very um, funny way of using Scratch. Just to show a little bit of an example, this is a bit um, hard work, not because it is difficult, it is not difficult. It's just that it takes a little bit more time because we have many sprites and we have to do all this coding and all these messages, messages and... Um, <laughs> every single sprite and we have to make sure that they appear on the screen see i will have to uh, i had to add positions everywhere because um i need to make sure they start from a certain point and they go to a certain point and everything connects <clears throat> so it's not necessarily difficult it's just a bit more laborious And then uh, two more type of animation I wanted to show you, but I will actually ask George to show you because this is entirely his work, pixel animation and uh, cards animation. Is George here? Oh, are you here, George? Yeah. George, are you here? Yes, yeah, he's here. Okay. Well, I wanted you to show them the, the pixel animations and how they can then turn into cards. Can you explain to them the pixel animations? Because I'm going to open okay. what? Just give me a minute. I'm going to share my screen in a minute. Just a second. Okay. Oh, that means you want me to stop sharing the screen, right? Do you have the pixels open? Well, while you get there, I'm going to play one of them. So this is oh, my ears. I need to the volume of this. So this is the type of Christmas animation that you turn into a Christmas card in the end. Ow, my ears. Are you ready? We don't have much time, so if you're still preparing, I'll show the next one. Yeah, sure. Okay. After you burst my eardrums. He designed this entirely. I, I don't do pixel animation, so this is his entire 
creation. And I can tell that he experimented in so many different ways. And I'm only sorry that he didn't save everywhere a separate project because I've seen this in different stages and there are like infinite ways, infinite number of ways in which this pixel thing can be done. I will let you show the spiral because that's interactive. I know it's interactive. So if you can show how you do the spiral, uh, how you can change the spiral, move the sliders to change the spiral once you make the spiral and mix this project. We are not into the mix now. So this is one way the spiral goes, but you can interactively change things and make it different. Are you ready, George? Almost. Let me try. I don't know exactly what I'm supposed to do here, but to do a different thing, change the colors. Don't start again. So I changed a few parameters here. Let's see what happens now. Okay, that was different. Let's look it again and then we change this one here. This one here. And it keeps going. Again, when we get to the studio, he will uh, explain to you how he works on this and where are those functions for changing color and uh, changing, changing distance come up. I don't think George uh, expecting me to uh, prompt him like this on the spot. I'm sorry, son. <laughs> I took you by surprise. I'm sorry about that. So we, um, anybody, any question now? So wait, uh, Pixonmation, right? I, I finished the pixel animation, so if you want to go to the next, uh, let's see which oh, one. Okay, fine. Why, why don't you show them the maze? Do you have the studios open, George? The class studios open? Wait, uh... Look, I'm going to message you the link. I can message you the link. Okay, I have it ready. You have it ready? Okay, then I'm closing, I'm going to uh, close my share. Yes, thank you very much. I'll share and you share. Can you share? This is, uh, it's something. So it's basically a little maze, and if you touch the edges, you lose. So just a second. Buggy. It was, this was like a very early game that I made. So not the best of mine, but it's still pretty good. And you try and bring the dog. That's a tricky part. Go to the right. <laughs> okay. That's a tricky part. Yay, you win. I, mean, I think there's like an Easter egg if you touch <laughs> the So um, this is a really successful um, maze and we, we can use mazes in many ways. Another thing to add it's not, it, it this is like this was actually like one of my first projects, so it's not very good. Well it's an example of a maze because this is a big category in Scratch. You know, mazes are games and it, it's an important category. But another thing to add here would be to add sounds. Like um, if we bump into a wall, that would be a sound. If we go the right way, that would be a sound. If we win, it would be like a cheering sound. So I know. Requires I, mean, I just, I probably just like. When we get there, like when, half an hour. when we get there, we'll do it again. At most half an hour. Okay, let's get to the next one, Sunny, if you don't mind. So, um, if you can stop this one. Um, before you show your games, I want you to show one animated card as well that I like a lot. 
can you go in uh, in the studio called um, Card Animation? Go in there now. And just show the, the first one, the one with the Christmas. Yeah, I'm trying to. It's fun. Because it's a, that's a storytelling. I forgot to show you that. So that's like a storytelling animation that he wrapped up and turned into a Christmas card. Many, many kids like to make cards. And this is that type of storytelling I was telling you about. Hi. So, um, this is it. <laughs> Like he, he did, he made this like two years ago, I think. It's we, terrible. We, we ask him every Christmas, we ask him to make a card for the family and it's that's great. what. Okay, and now your favorite, if it's okay with Coach K, we have another by about five minutes. I, I would like you to um, show your games. Is that okay, Coach K? Yeah, that's okay. Go ahead. So we have the last studio about the games and so on. Well, I can show you what my favorite is but i don't think you'll like well it. i chose the uh, one uh, one or two from each category that i found in your studio so i must admit i made the selection games and you can start with the most recent one the gerbox one the most recent that's his new creation actually i want to try and um do you know the clicker game? Okay, you want to start with a clicker game, that's fine. Yeah, and, and an actual clicker game, not one of those weird things that I made. Like one of these things. Whatever. Okie dokie. We can okay, fine. So um I built this off of a clicker template. It, it was just like a simple thing. Anyway, so the the point of it is you're a hacker, I guess. And each time you click on this, it's a GIF. So it, like, I, um, just a second, let me see the size of this. So basically this, um, to make this animation, I downloaded a GIF and I'm using it so I can, like, every time I click, it changes. It goes to a new clip. Anyway, um, when you play, uh, let me just get, uh, 25. You can go to the compiler, and you can buy stuff to get more scripts. So, just a second. Get it better. <laughs> This is a joke, of course. Where is that? And then fishing website. And then it makes you uh, five scripts per second. So let's just play that out. And then you got an email virus. So now I have 15 scripts per second. So wait, let's do 200. And then you have a self-replicating script. And then I have 35 scripts per second. And then it goes kind of up from here. And then you purchase a hacker. Now I have 60 scripts per second. Now I can get a server and I have 110 scripts per second and how far does he go? Uh, well, you can buy multiple of each, but I have a team of hackers now. And yeah, now I have 210 scripts per second. And it, it's basically that. So it's like, uh, 
Oh, and also, um, if, if you can't afford it, uh, if you click on that, it just doesn't download since it's, um, okay. That's for the cool. purchases, it says, uh, if the scripts are over 49, yeah. So it doesn't allow you to do it over. Okay. No, right. So you have a limit. You did set a limit. Can you show us another game? We have only about five minutes and I want you to go through all the types of games there if you're okay. Oh, so oh, you. Oh, <laughs> oh, no. Okay, I'll try and rush myself a bit. <laughs> okay. Um, Hi, Mama Gerbil. I, I actually jumped the pug. I asked actually. Okay, jump the pug. I did show them the, the other one, the, the other jumping one. Yeah, uh, so it's basically, I made it out of pixel animation. Uh, and how it works is basically... Whenever you run into a pug, uh, you lose a score, but... You can jump! It, it, it's kind of hard to really get the hang of, but it works. Anyway, so it basically just goes up and down, and then the uh, pugs come toward it, so it seems like um, the sprite is moving forward. And uh, you're really just standing in one place and jumping over the uh, pug side. Okay, ah, another one. <clears throat> I'm sorry I have to rush you through, but I want you to have time to show all of them. You don't need to explain how it works now because we'll get there. Oh. Uh, one of them called Sumo Pug. Um, it is. Okay. Tasty Planet 1 and 2 and Tasty Blue. So, anyway, it's basically like. So, the size type there. Um, so I put like a little, so you're basically like a sumo, and then like you can eat the uh, the apple, and then after you eat the apple, you can eat that, and then you eat that, and then you're able to eat the, uh, the thing, and then it goes up and So down. you pick more things, you grow, and you also gain points. And then you can also like, and then you can use uh, like, you eat all these buildings, and and then you can eat streets because you're big enough. And then for this, you try and eat the uh, thing so you can get big enough. And you eat that. And then you can go down eat the earth and and then now your solar system and then you go up here finally and eat the black hole and that's the end you turn into a black hole okay yeah so the idea of the game was to pick things and grow and gain points yeah. uh so like uh wait just a second for instance um I wish I put a skip scene in here. Uh, so, for instance, if you try to eat the uh, melon now, it wouldn't allow you to. But if you eat the apple and the fruit dish, now it allows you to eat the melon. So you set an order. Yeah. Okay. Hi. Next one. Come on. Uh, oh God. Okay. You did it again. Um, you know what, I guess this. So this is basically a representation of uh, what a mother gerbil would see for their eyes. So you're trying to get, oh God, it hurts your ears so much, but you try to get the uh, babies back to the nest while trying to avoid the human hands. And so it's basically a representation of the world from a gerbil's eyes, uh, mother gerbil's eyes. He wants, they want to protect their children 
and they want to run away from the weird well, nature so that all these all these uh, sprites are created by you from your you know these are pictures of our yeah. weird robots. and i basically yeah. spent like 20 hours just chipping away at them until i got rid of the background so he made the sprite and he made the hand and he made the bit the bedrock they are all real elements in our home here I could show you our real gerbils if you want. You know, we could have just picked some pictures or sprites from the uh, from the system, but he was just challenged to create his own sprites. Yeah, it, it was for like a, a school assignment, but I still like it. Uh, right, Google and Scratch. Uh, I didn't. I call it the password. Yeah, I, I didn't really put that many because, like, the original idea was just to like keep on going with it, but not many people looked at it, and I gave up on the idea. Well, but it's, it's pretty good. So, um, uh, <laughs> I don't remember what I put. I can just assume these are the only things I put. Just so that's fine. You're okay, good. so you start. So you get that. So. Loading, save yourself, go, it's too late for me. Great. And then I look up Google, and then I go back to Google, and YouTube. Oh, it's my channel, right? Okay. Um, yeah, that that's probably all I put. Actually, I might be able to dig for some Easter eggs. So thank you so much, George, for sharing all your projects. And uh, Arena, if you want to say something, you can go ahead and do it. And then I'll wrap up the class by uh, um, giving them an overview of what to expect in upcoming classes. Go ahead. Um, I wish I could have uh, more feedback for the kids when we uh, talk now. It was just like a presentation of all the lessons and studios. When we start teaching, it would help mutually help all of us if we make it a bit more interactive. So I get some feedback if they understand, if they like it, if they find this thing boring. Um, if we had another two minutes now, I would like to know um, from each of them, what is their main interest? Like my kid is great about games. She doesn't care about much anything else, you know, but I know girls are usually more into animation and storytelling or, you know, if any aspect of Scratch is of more particular to you, more particular interest to you, so we know where to, um, you can close, George, you can close the screen now and I'll share mine. Sure, yeah, we'll ask them, we'll open up the stage to the students, okay? So thank you, Adina. So everybody, I want your attention now. So you saw a demonstration of different kinds of Scratch project and you have access to most of these. In the once you log in using the username and password that you have created, you'll be able to see all these, and then you can experiment with them and create your own projects as well. Okay, so from next class onwards, we will be working side by side as and when the teacher explains, you will be doing it as well. Okay, is that clear? Clear, okay. Yes. And since most of you, I mean, uh, just other than Nishan and Nina, everybody else, you have played with Scratch at Shiva. We, we helped you create an account and you have done at least one or two projects. So why don't you all start by doing a simple project, open up a simple Scratch program and then design a birthday card. Okay, so design your own birthday card and we can present it to whoever has the upcoming birthday card, okay? We'll learn how to customize it, how to do animations with it. So next time when we meet for the class, just have a simple backdrop for a birthday card. Even if you don't have any sprites that moves, that's fine. We can learn coding later on and we can animate it. I want you all to do at least a static card. Is that clear? Okay.